One of my most vivid memories was at the Liberty Science Museum as a child. I remember these interactive exhibits where we would be playing with blocks, feeling different textures, taking things apart and putting them back together again. And it was these tactile experiences that sort of shaped the way I interact with the world. I remember even in my adolescence, I would find these random things on the street, like this old paper shredder, and I'd bring it home, take it apart, put it back together just to see how it works. Even sometimes I would catch things on fire. And I remember my mom saying to me, Jasper, how can we take your destructive nature and make it constructive? Funny enough, I made it a career. I became a chef where I could catch things on fire for a living. <laughs> I spent the next few years engrossing myself in the kitchen, finding out how all these different flavors go together, how different techniques work. But I couldn't help but feel like there was a fundamental piece missing from the equation, where my food came from. And so I found myself in the garden, learning all about how plants work and how to grow the juiciest tomato. I remember this beautiful energy that existed in the community garden. We would share values and recipes. We would have these beautiful meetings. And it wasn't long before I started teaching cooking classes in that community garden. I remember this very pivotal moment, sort of this aha moment I had, where I was teaching a group of teenagers how to make dumplings from spring onions that I had planted earlier on in the season. And I remember this one student pulling the spring onion out of her arms and having this look of disgust, like it was radioactive, like it was going to take a bite out of her. And it was sort of there that I realized this huge disconnect that people who grow up in urban environments have with nature and where their food comes from. They'd only ever seen these spring onions packaged in cellophane and put neatly on a shelf. And so I made it my mission to connect people with nature. But I wanted to take this, this lightning in a bottle that I had found in the community garden and take it to the rest of the city. So I started guerrilla gardening, not asking for permission, just asking for a little bit of forgiveness. And I started small. There was a tree right outside of my house, and I bordered it with wood, filled it with soil and different flowers and herbs, even some strawberries. And immediately, people started to notice. My neighbors even came up and complimented me. They appreciated it. And this place that meant nothing to anyone before now had significance to us. My friend taught me this wonderful technique, this magical technique of working with willows. You see, willows are this really beautiful plant. There's this natural rooting hormone inside of the bark that when you just cut a stick and put it in the ground, it'll actually become a whole new tree. We thought maybe there's a way we could take this one step further and create living architecture inside of a city. And so we had our first project in Amsterdam, actually, on the side of the canal, in front of this place called Cafe Brandon. And while building it, the bar manager actually came out and offered us beers <laughs> and mentioned how he had even tried to plant willows there earlier the year before. We had this immediate connection, not just with the area itself, but with the people who lived there. When we think of cities, we think of them as these rigid, hostile places filled with metal and concrete. Think benches that are designed to be uncomfortable so people don't sleep there, or metal wires put up to keep birds away. But what if we found a way to coexist with nature in our cities? That actually happened once when we were building this willow dome, also on the side of the canal in Amsterdam. And while building it, we stumbled upon this tiny little duck's nest. And while we could have just abandoned the project altogether, we thought, why don't we find a way to incorporate it in our design? So we created a tiny little duck's nest dome a little willow dome for the duck, and protected it and fostered it. And while we had initially created this structure to connect people with nature, 
we thought, what if we actually create a place for nature in our urban environments? Something similar happened in Brooklyn, actually, not by myself, but there was a leaking fire hydrant that just was slowly dripping water. A small little puddle collected, didn't mean anything to anybody before. But then residents came together and started leaving little things, little knickknacks, some stones, and even adding goldfish to this small little pond. <laughs> and it got known as bed Aquarium. Again, this place meant nothing to anyone before, but now it had significance. Despite efforts from the government to take it away, people kept on bringing it back. The value of that area had changed. But I know what you're thinking. This sounds great, but there's had to have been some failures. There's had to have been some drawbacks, and there have been. One time I created this beautiful willow table as a place for people to come together, share ideas, maybe just have a cup of tea. But unfortunately, the willow table died. And, you know, we've all had house plants we brought home and they died. I had a table. Eventually, the government came and took that table away. And at first, I was really disheartened. Oh, what was me, my beautiful table. <laughs> but then something magical happened. Somebody left one plant, just one plant, right where that table used to be. I came back a few weeks later and multiple plants had been left. There was a small little garden, almost like this little memorial to the table that used to be there. <laughs> and the funny thing was, the significance of that place didn't come from the plants themselves, but from the emotional impact we put with those plants. Again, that value of that space had changed. Similar things happened like here in Geneva, where a neighbor saw this little plot of land that had been trampled on by dogs peeing and pooping there. And she had this beautiful idea to just build a little willow fence around it, to guard it. And immediately, people took notice. They would curb their dog. They respected it, and it became this little garden. Or in Prague, where my friend did an artist's residency and built this beautiful willow dome on top of an old bench facing a church. It was a beautiful place to get some shade and just soak in the beauty around them. Or at Azora, where we built this huge 42 meter wide festival terrain, a structure for people to connect with nature while at a festival. And while the initial idea was to create something for people to connect with nature in the festival, while building with 10 or 20 volunteers, we actually all connected with each other in a way I'd never seen before. So I want to challenge you. I want you guys to go out and do better than I did. Be a little bit rebellious. Maybe take things apart and put them back together again. Maybe it's a corner on your street that could become a garden, or a blank wall that could become a mosaic or an art piece, or just a random area that could become a public gathering spot. Never underestimate the power of these small, insignificant changes. Because indeed, it's these insignificant changes that can end up having a huge difference. Wow.